From Requiem to Reconstruction, Interview with Arida Awada Volume 2 Post Date, 08-18-2017 Arida Awada Born on March 28, 1955 Family of four, including wife, eldest son, and eldest daughter. Former radio announcer in Fukushima, programming director. Currently freelance announcer. Author, scheduled to publish Owada Notes, The Importance of Communicating, The Splendor of Communicating, in September this year motto, What You Can Do Tomorrow, Don't Do It Today, What You Can Do Today, Do It Today with All Your Might. People in Hawaii are laid back, and they think about what tomorrow will be like. How will we play? It's fun. Hey, every day. What you can do tomorrow, don't do today, might be perfect for the people of Hawaii, he joked. The importance of communicating from Fukushima now from the day of the Great Tohoku Earthquake, Radio Fukushima ran a campaign called Let's Do Our Best in Fukushima, Let's Do Our Best in Tohoku, and Let's Do Our Best in Japan. However, viewers asked, what should we do our best, and asked, do you know anything about the situation? This reprimand led Mr. Owada to head to a site with high radiation levels. Interviewer, Minoreo Matsuo slash Nick Ken Sunday August 16, 2016, what is, let's do our best in Fukushima, and, let's do our best in Tohoku. Having experienced the great earthquake, have you reconsidered what kind of disaster coverage should be done, what are the challenges for broadcasting stations, and what are the challenges for your own reporting? Owada, at the time of the earthquake, we broadcast without any commercials, with the themes of, let's do our best Fukushima, let's do our best in Tohoku, and, let's do our best in Japan. However, on April 2nd, the month after the earthquake, I received a fax addressed to Mr. Awada from a person in Fukushima who was listening to my radio show. This person sent us a very angry message via fax. What's wrong with let's do our best in Fukushima and let's do our best in Tohoku? Listening to the radio makes me angry. When this person went to the coastal area for work, there was an old man poking at the rubble with a bamboo stick and looking under the rubble. When I asked him, what are you doing, he said, I'm looking for my daughter, her daughter works at a nursing home and she was seen riding her bike on her way to the facility. But then the nursing home was washed away and the bodies of the elderly people there were found. However, the old man couldn't find his daughter, so he used a bamboo stick to dig through the rubble to find her daughter. The listener said, Mr. Owada, you keep saying big things on the air, but are you really watching the scene? What on earth is let's do our best in Fukushima, let's do our best in Tohoku, and let's do our best in Japan? What should that old man do his best? Answer please on the way home, let's do our best Fukushima, came on the radio again. At this point, I was so sad, sad, and disgusted that I turned off the radio. The fact said that she had been waiting for this. At that time, I had a reason why I couldn't go to the site. As the director of the organization, I could not send my subordinates to the coastal area where there was a high dose of radiation after the nuclear power plant exploded. We were a small company of only 60 people, and yet everyone was working hard, forgetting to eat and sleep. This fax had a strong impact on me, and I still treasure it to this day. I thought carefully about how I could truly empathize with the listeners. Reporting stays on the ground we went back to basics and told the president, the radiation dose is extremely high, so we can't send our employees out, however, I would like to go to the site once a week and cover the actual site. During this time, I will not be in charge of the station, and during that time I would like to leave it to the head of the news department, he said, and received permission. And my field trip began. In front of the photograph of Himika-chan in fourth grade, there was a reference book in first year of high school. At that time, she would have been cooler if she had died with Himika. While walking around the disaster site, I met Himika's father, Takashi. At first, you stubbornly refused to be interviewed, but after going over and over again, you eventually opened your eyes. Himika Suzuki, 10 years old, 4th grade elementary school student, loves drawing. When she went on a field trip to the Shiazaki Lighthouse in Iwaki City, a tourist attraction visited by 200,000 people a year, in 3rd grade, she drew a picture of the lighthouse. Himika-chan's handkerchief 7 children are on the highest corridor of the lighthouse overlooking the scenery, and 3 friends are on the path up to the lighthouse. The sky is yellow, and a white seagull is drawn in the bright red sun. Psychiatrists praise this painting for two things. One is that third graders can't draw the sky yellow. The white seagulls in the bright red sun also represent the joy of living. Second, it depicts the large number of people. Children are depicted facing the sea on the rooftop corridor of the lighthouse, but this also indicates that there are many children on the other side, which are not depicted directly, and even under the stairs, which are not depicted. ING it is said that this is a picture that can only be drawn by a child who has received a lot of love. Himika passed away in the tsunami with her grandmother at her beloved grandmother's house on March 11, 2011, the year after she drew this picture. 
Her father, Takashi, was contacted by the police a week after the tsunami and met Himika at her mortuary. You say quietly, I'm the world's most uncool father. It would have been cooler if I had died at that time. Your father, Takashi, has made this picture into handkerchiefs and is now handing them out to everyone. The living proof of Himika remains here, he said. Two years after the earthquake, you built a house on a hill, and on the second floor you built a room for Himika-chan, who had the best grades in her class when she was in fourth grade. If Himika-chan were still alive, she would be in high school right now. In front of the photograph of Himika-chan, which was carefully enshrined in Himika-chan's room, there is a study reference book for first-year high school students with the message, Himika-chan, please study. The media always uses the word, milestone, on March 11th, referring to the second and third year milestones. However, there is no, milestone, for disaster victims. For the victims, and even more so for the families of those who are still missing and whose bodies have not been found, every day is March 11th. Himika-chan from the past, continued, to Volume 3.